What's up guys and welcome back to Poor Man Printing. Today we got something to go over and it's, it's kind of big. It's it's it, it could be very very big. I'm just saying it could be um, we could be looking at a $50 Omi token. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but I come across this today and it looks like Facebook is going to make a metaverse along with they've also partnered up with Ray-Ban sunglasses to make AR glasses. Now I'm just saying you can take it as you want. If these two companies hook up Facebook and Omi life changing, life changing. Let's take a look at this right here real quick. Okay, guys, let's start with how many people are actually on Facebook, right? So right here, I got it pulled up. It's roughly 2.85 billion monthly active users as the first quarter of 2021. 2.85 billion people, guys, on Facebook. Now, let's get into this right here real quick. This is a video that was posted September 16th, 2020. I know, right? I never seen it. It only has 17,665 views. So a lot of people have not seen this and they don't know about this. I didn't know about it until today. This is Mark Zuckerberg's, his little, his kickoff or whatever to uh, the AR glasses. Yeah, let's watch this first and then we'll get into the metaverse. So I'm looking forward to showing you what we've been working on. But before we dive in, you may have noticed that this event got a new name, Facebook Connect, and it's brought to you by a new group, Facebook Reality Labs. And that's because this work, to build the next computing platform, to deliver that sense of presence and immersion, and to make it the best platform for connecting with people you care about, that work increasingly requires us to extend beyond just our, our Oculus or all of our augmented reality and virtual reality efforts, which we are calling Facebook Reality Labs. And now we also have between you. So today we're going to talk about how we're going to get there. Now, first, let's talk about augmented reality. The goal here. You hear that? He's moving into augmented reality. AR, come on, baby. What does VV do? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Is to develop some normal size, nice looking glasses uh, that you can wear all day and interact with holograms, digital objects, and information uh, while still being present with the people and world around you. Maybe you want to just sit on your couch and have a friend teleport and have their hologram sit right next to you to play. He just said teleport, didn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Games or just talk or hang out. You know, maybe you're walking somewhere and you want directions or you see something awesome and you want to share it without having to take out your phone. Maybe you don't want to have to carry your phone around at all or have to worry about having it take you away from the moment. You're going to be able to do all of this with a pair of glasses. Now, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on some of the foundational technologies. Later today, uh, we're going to share more about Project Aria, which is the first research device that we're going to be putting out into the world to help us understand the software and hardware needed to build our first consumer augmented reality glasses. And we're starting to put together all the different building blocks, including the, the input systems, the display systems, spatial audio. We have a team of computational neuroscientists and... Now check that out, guys. That's like a, a neural system that goes on your wrist so you can actually type in midair in augmented reality. Keep watching. Engineers working on non-invasive neural interfaces and ways to use subtle gestures to control augmented reality objects in the world. There are still hard problems to solve, but this has the opportunity to open up a lot of new ways for people to connect, to work, learn, and play in the future. And we now have line of sight into how we're going to get there in the coming years. Now, in the meantime, uh, there's a lot that we can do today with the technology that we've already created in order to develop great smart glasses. They're not yet augmented reality glasses, but they're on the road there. So a couple of years ago, I started meeting with some of the best eyeglasses makers around the world. And, and this journey took me to Milan, where I met with the founder of a company called Essilor Luxottica. They're the best in the world at making glasses, and they make best technology together with the best glasses. 
And of course, in the future, you know, people aren't all going to wear one or two different styles of glasses, uh, like we just have a couple of different kinds of phones. So we need to support a lot of different designs and styles, and that's what Luxottica does. Now, we don't have a product yet to share with you today, but I am excited to share that we have formed a multi-year partnership, starting with building and releasing our first pair of smart glasses next year. Now, I can't go into full product details yet. Right now, there's a big race between Facebook, Amazon, Apple. It's a race to get the first AR glasses out that actually look like regular glasses, kind of like Ray-Bans or something like that. But yeah, that's what they're racing for right now. And you know Facebook's got the money to do it, guys. They got the money. Uh, but they're going to be the next step on the road to augmented reality glasses. And they look pretty good, too. So here's a quick video that our team put together. Introducing the glasses of the future. Cutting edge technology ahead of its time. The eyewear of tomorrow. I'm probably going to have to mute that so I don't get copyrighted by freaking YouTube. But yeah, it looks like they're showing the evolution of these glasses and yeah it's a right here is a problem with the video i don't know why it paused right there so basically people just want glasses that look at like everyday normal glasses you know so there's a big race between facebook and everybody to come out with the best glasses right now watch this watch this here it comes boom there it is. There it is. Rayman, Facebook, and that other company, Luxottica. There you go. Raybans, Facebook, Luxottica, all teamed up to make the AR glasses. And like I said, I think Facebook is could could win. Could win this race because they got the money to do it. But I don't know. You got Amazon too, you know. I mean, everybody's shooting for this. This isn't what I wanted y'all to see. I mean, it is, but it ain't. But I want you to listen to Mark Zuckerberg actually talk about the metaverse. So let's get into that right now. So this right here is a interview with Mark Zuckerberg and Casey Newton. And they did it in Discord, which is pretty cool if you think about it. But this is where Mark Zuckerberg talks about the metaverse. And this is the way he's leaning towards. I'm telling you right now, if VV and Facebook get together on this metaverse, game over. I mean, it could be a $50 Omi. It could be a $100 Omi. Who knows at that point? I mean, what was it? 2.85 billion people on Facebook. And they cut that in half. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, if VV and Facebook got together on this, it's just game over. Plain and simple. So let's listen to Mark Zuckerberg talk about the metaverse and his vision. Okay, guys, let's listen in. I'm really trying not to make this a long video, but man, it's some really good stuff in here. I want you to hear exactly the way Mark Zuckerberg talks. He talks about AAA and everything. I mean, he knows what's up with Vivi. I'm telling you right now, he knows about Vivi. Let's listen. Zuckerberg, welcome to the Vergecast. Thanks, Casey. It's good to be here. We've got a lot to go through. Yeah, as always, there's a lot to discuss with you. The White House is demanding Facebook do more to remove vaccine misinformation, which I know is on a lot of people's minds right now. I want to get to that. But I want to start with this talk you gave internally at Facebook a few weeks. No, I'm not. I'm probably not going to play the whole uh, Discord chat right here because it, it's like 30 minutes long. But I will link it in my comments. I will link it in the video. So everybody can go back and listen to the whole thing. It's one part in there where he's talking about the metaverse. And then, uh, what's the guy's name? Chase. Casey. Casey. Casey Newton actually start talking about the vaccine you know the safety of facebook misinformation about the vaccine and mark zuckerberg talks about it just for like i don't know like a minute and go right back to the metaverse 
It's coming, guys. I'm telling you. Weeks ago, which I recently had a chance to watch. And you told your employees that your future vision of Facebook is not the two dimensional version of it that we're using today, but something called the metaverse. So, what is a metaverse and what parts of it uh, does Facebook plan to build? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a big topic. You know, the metaverse is a vision that spans many companies, the, the whole industry. I mean, you, you can kind of think about it as successor to the, the mobile internet. And it's certainly not something that any one company is going to build, but I think a, a big part of our next chapter is gonna hopefully be contributing to building that in partnership with a lot of other companies and creators and developers. But you can kind of think about the metaverse as an embodied internet, right? Where instead of just viewing content, you are in it and you, you feel present uh, with other people, it, like, as if you're in other places, having different experiences that you you couldn't necessarily do on, on um, you know, a, a 2D app or, or web page, like dancing, you know, for example, um, or, or uh, different types of fitness. But, you know, I think a lot of people, when they think about the metaverse, they, they think about, you know, just you know, virtual reality, which, which I think is going to be an important part of that. And that's, that's clearly a part that we're very invested in because it's the technology that delivers the, the clearest form of presence. But, but the metaverse isn't just virtual reality. It's going to be accessible across all of our different computing platforms, um, VR, NAR, but also PC and also, you know, mobile devices and game consoles. You know, which speaking of which, a, a lot of people, you know, also think about the metaverse as primarily something that's, that's about gaming. And I think entertainment is clearly going to be a big part of it, but but I don't think that this is really just gaming. I think that this is a, a persistent, synchronous environment where we can where we can be together, which I, I think is is probably going to resemble in a lot of ways, you know, some kind of a hybrid between the social platforms that we see today, but a, an environment where you're you're embodied in it. So that that can be three D. It doesn't have to be. You know, you you might be able to jump into an experience you know, like a, a, a 3D concert or something, you know, from, from your. Wasn't uh, David actually talking about a 3D or AR concert that you could actually pay Omi to go see or something like that? And there it is. There it is. Your phone, so you can kind of get elements that are 2D or elements that are 3D. But I'd love to go through a bunch of the use cases and in, in, in more detail. But, but overall, I think that this is going to be a really big part of the next chapter for the technology industry overall. And it's something that, that, we're, that we're very excited about. It, it, it just touches, you know, a lot of the biggest themes that that we're working on. You know, think about things like community and, and creators um, as one, or digital commerce as a second, or building out the next set of computing platforms like virtual and augmented reality to give people that sense of presence. I there it is augmented reality so i actually just to let y'all know i talked to reese about this and let him know like hey you know you heard about facebook you know <laughs> can you give me can you throw me a bone or something you know are y'all are talking to facebook or anything and he he responded pretty much like you know he this is the first time he's heard about it but i bet you i know who knows about this and that's david you and dan crothers i bet you they know about this and Maybe they have talked to Facebook. I, I really don't know. Uh, this is the first day I've seen this, but we all know that David Yu is like a hundred steps in front of us. So who knows? I think all of these different initiatives that we have at, at Facebook today, I think will basically ladder up um, together uh, to, to contribute to helping to build this, this metaverse vision. You know, my hope if we do this well, I think over the next five years or so in this next chapter of our company, you know, I think we'll, we will, I think, effectively transition from, you know, people seeing us as primarily being a, a social media uh, company to being a metaverse company, hmm. you know, and, and, and obviously, you know, all of the work that we're And see, I like what he's saying here, because he's like, he wants everybody to come together. So like VV could actually have their VV verse. Or, or whatever they're building on Facebook, or Facebook could actually work with Vivi, and I, I don't know. But if they come together, like I've said, it's game over, game over, game over. Fifty dollar, hundred dollar token. Here we come.
we're doing across the, the apps that people use today contribute directly to this vision in terms of building community and creators. So there's a lot to, to, to jump into here. I'm curious you know, what direction you want to take this in, but, but this is something that I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on, thinking a lot about. We're working on a ton, um, and I think it's just a big part of the next chapter for, for the work that we're going to do in the whole industry. Yeah. I mean, this feels like a fairly like far future vision, even though parts of it are kind of visible now and, and coming together. I think overall, it feels like a very maximalist version of what the internet could be. You talk to employees about from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, being able to jump into the metaverse to do almost anything you can imagine. And probably some of us are already using the internet uh, that way already. But this description feels more like the metaverse that might be familiar to to us from books like Ready Player One or Snow Crash, uh, or maybe like Fortnite today, uh, where some of the most important aspects of our lives, including our work, are being uh, lived and done inside these virtual spaces. Are those good analogs for the, the kind of world that you're talking about? And see, that's the thing about the metaverse. Like, I could probably go to my friends back home and say, hey, man, you heard about the metaverse? And, you know, they're all country people and stuff. They like, I, I could pretty much say that they'd say, what the hell's the metaverse? <laughs> but it's going to be really big because everybody wants it. Everybody wants that player ready one uh, atmosphere where you can just go in there and order a pizza, watch a movie, look at your collectibles, whatever you want to do. David, you knows this. And uh, it's the same thing back in the 80s. I believe it was the 80s uh, when the Internet come out. But people's like, what's the Internet like? You know, they used the Internet to start off with just for like emails. This, instead of mailing a letter, you could just get an email and it'd be instant. Well, I don't know if it's really instant, but it was pretty dang fast. But it was a way of communication. And that's what I'm saying about the metaverse and the VVverse. It's going to be a way of communication and interact with your friends, watch a movie, hang out, look at their collectibles, order pizza, uh, race uh, race car games, race, race your buddy down the road, uh, and AR, you know, it's insane. And Mark Zuckerberg knows this and this is why he's moving on it. Well, what I'm excited about is helping people deliver and, and experience a, a much stronger sense of presence with the people they care about, the people they work with, the places they, they want to be. And, you know, the reality is that today with the mobile internet, we already, have something that that I think a lot of people access from the moment they wake up to when they go to bed. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, a, a lot of mornings I, I reach for my my phone by my bedside before I even um, put on my glasses, right, just to make sure you know get, get whatever text messages I got during the middle of the night, and and you know make sure you know that nothing is has um, <laughs> gone wrong that I need to jump into immediately upon waking up. So I don't think that this is primarily about being engaged with the internet more. I think it's about being engaged more naturally. And, you know, today I, I think about the computing platforms that we have. You know, we have these phones. They're relatively small. A lot of the time that we're spending, you know, we're, we're basically mediating our lives and our communication through these small glowing rectangles. And, you know, I think that that's, that's not really how, how people are made to interact. You know, a lot of the, the meetings that we have today are, you know, you're looking at a grid of faces on a screen. You know, that's not how we process things either. We're used to being in a room with people and having a sense of space where, you know, if you're sitting to my right, then that means that I'm also sitting to your left. So we have some kind of shared sense of space in common. When you speak, it's coming from my right. It's not just, you know, all coming from, from the same place in front of me. And, you know, I, I don't know how much you've had this experience, but, but I, I have a bunch on, you know, in, in work meetings of the last year where I, I sometimes find it hard to kind of remember what meeting someone said something in because they all kind of look the same and they all blend together. And I think part of that is because we don't have this sense of presence and space. So, you know, what, what virtual and augmented reality can do and, and what the metaverse broadly is going to help people experience is a, a sense of presence that I think is just much more natural in the way that, that we're made to interact. And, and I think it'll be more comfortable. The interactions that we have will be a lot richer. They'll feel real. And see, that's why I like VV. Like, I can go to OpenC and I can look at all their stuff and I just don't care for it. It's, it to me, this is me. You know, y'all might be different, but me, I look at the these NFTs and OpenCs that are not, that you cannot put in AR or not 2D or anything, just a picture, you know, a card or something. It, 
that you own the rights to because it's on the blockchain. It doesn't excite me. But if, if I'm in the metaverse or say the VV verse, if I'm in the VV verse and you could actually go, <laughs> y'all will probably laugh at this, but go hunting or something and shoot a deer and then get it mounted in uh, 2D or 3D or AR and, and put it in my, my living room next to my fireplace with my Pokemon. Right. You hear that? <laughs> but that would. I would benefit that a lot more. I, I would like that situation a lot more than just a picture that's on a uh, uh, a drive, you know, a a coal wallet or whatever. It's that I like that more. I, I don't know about y'all, but this is how I feel is I, I want something that I can interact with, you know, not just a picture. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get get out is but that's me you know but let's continue listening um you know in the future instead of just doing this over over a phone call you'll be able to sit as as, as a hologram on my on my couch or i'll be able to kind of sit as a hologram on, on your couch and we'll be able to it'll, it'll actually feel like we're we're in the same place even even if we're in different states or or hundreds of miles apart so i think that that is that is really powerful and you know i kind of think about you know, I've been thinking about some of this stuff since I was, you know, in middle school and just starting to code. I remember, you know, was it when I was in math class, I would have my notebook and I'd basically just like sit there and write code and ideas for, for things I wanted to go, you know, code when I got home from school that day. And, you know, some of them I was able to do back then. But one of the things that I really wanted to, to build was basically the sense of, of kind of an embodied internet where you could... You, you could kind of be in the environment and teleport to different places and be with friends. But, you know, I think some combination of the fact that I probably didn't know enough math to pull that off then and just the technology was decades away from really being ready to do that in a good way. And so that's another thing. I believe, you know, everybody's got their own feelings on COVID-19, but I believe COVID-19 pushed AR, VR, 3D, 2D images and, and NFTs. I really do think it because Everybody was stuck in their house. And as humans, we want to communicate. That's just how we get, that's how, that's how we get along. We, we have to communicate to be sane. I mean, if you're ever washing clothes or dishes or whatever, you're not talking to yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I believe COVID-19 pushed uh, AR and these, these digital glasses that you can wear in AR and getting rid of the cell phone I believe it actually pushed towards that, but that's just my thoughts. You know, that wasn't the the, the direction that I gravitated in originally, um, in terms of building different social experiences. But you know, this is something that I've been excited about. I've I've kind of thought has been I've, I've thought that this would be the holy grail of social interactions from well before I started when I started Facebook and. And um, and and uh, it's it's really exciting to me that now the next set of platforms are going to be able to to do this. You know, that's one of the reasons we're, we're investing so much in in um, augmented and virtual reality. Is you know, mobile phones kind of came around at the same time as Facebook, so we didn't really get to to play a big role in, in shaping the development of those platforms. So they, they didn't really develop in a very natural way, from my perspective. You know, people aren't meant to, I think, navigate things in terms of you know a grid of apps. You know, I think we're, we we interact much more naturally when we think about being present with other people. We we orient ourselves and think about the world through people and and the interactions we have with people and what we do with them. And I think if we can help build the next set of computing platforms and and experiences across that in a way that's more natural and lets us feel more present with people, I think that that'll be a very positive thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that people would necessarily find it more natural to work all day wearing a VR helmet, but but maybe it's something we get used to. But I am really interested in in some of the things that you've said about like the the way a metaverse could create jobs that that don't exist today, sort of like whole economies springing up I inside of this metaverse. Uh, like what novel? And that's true, because remember, David, you actually talked about this, about renting out your DeLorean uh, for like 20 gems, 24 hours or something like that, or setting up your, your NFTs. You got this special showroom, Batman or whatever, and you're charging, I don't know, three or four gems for people to go in there and check it out. Just like the uh, the FA's one, you know, the ones that uh, Vivi holds. 
they're going to open up a museum for all of the series one series one's uh fa's so everybody i mean you could probably have to pay like i don't know 10 omi to go in there and just just check it out and just look at all the 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 first nfts of that brand so th that's that's exactly right the metaverse or the viviverse could actually create jobs like you could actually get paid I mean, it could, you know, it could be 5, 10, 15 years down the road, but it, it's possible. It could happen. Full new forms of work do, do you see happening in this world you want to build? Yeah, so let, let me get to that in a second. But just to yeah. go back to your comment about people not working in this all day long. I mean, there, there's clearly an evolution or, or you know, multiple in the technology that are going to need to to be possible that will need to happen before this is kind of the main way that, that people work, but but I think we're going to be there by the end of this decade. Um, hmm. You know, today the the VR headsets are are a bit they're, they're still kind of a bit clunky. You know, they're maybe a bit heavier than you would ideally like them to be. You, there need to be advances and being able to express yourself and having higher resolution, being able to read text better, a number of things like that. Uh, but we're getting there, and in hmm. each version is better and better. And Quest Two has been a real hit so far in in terms of how people are using it. I've been surprised. You know, we, we planned on it mostly being used for games and thought that a lot of these social interactions or things around work wouldn't come until later. But we're, you know, a lot of the the, the, the biggest experiences on, on Quest 2 that people spend the most time in are, are already just hanging out socially. There are, And there are a number of things around work and productivity. There are even experiences that I, I just, I, I really hadn't thought about, things like fitness. You know, these these apps like Supernatural and FitXR, which, you know, you can kind of think about it like Peloton, but instead of having a, a bike or a treadmill, the device is your VR headset, and you're basically taking a class in there where you're boxing or dancing, or you know, and and it's 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 really fun. I I think if if you haven't tried it out, um, you know, it's it's something that a lot of people are enjoying. But but going back to your point about uh, work and how this is gonna gonna work, I, I don't I, I also don't think this is gonna be all VR. I think it's gonna be AR too. Mm -hmm. And you know, part of the reason why VR is yep. available and why you have things like the Quest Two years before you're you're gonna have. AR glasses is because, you know, it's a little more socially acceptable to wear something like a VR headset in the comfort of your own home. But I think to get AR glasses that we wear around throughout the day, they, they have to be normal looking glasses, right? So you're basically cramming all of these materials to build, you know, what we would have thought of as a supercomputer 10 years ago into the frame of glasses that are about five millimeters thick. So, you know, call it, um, you know, it's, you, you have computer chips and networking chips and you know, holographic waveguides and and things for for kind of sensing and mapping out the world and batteries and speakers and like all this stuff and it just needs to fit um, in, into these glasses. So that's a that is a real challenge. Um, you know, I, I I actually would go so far as to say that I think that that might be you know one of uh, if not the biggest technological challenge that that our industry will face in the next decade. You know, we tend to hmm. to really celebrate things that are big. Right, but but I actually think in a lot of times miniaturizing things and getting getting a supercomputer to fit into a pair of glasses is actually um, one one of the bigger challenges. But once you have that, right, so you have those glasses and you have your your, your VR headset. I think that's going to enable a, a bunch of really interesting use cases. So one is you will be able to you know with with basically a snap of your fingers pull up your perfect workstation. Right, so uh, anywhere you go, you can walk into a Starbucks. Um, you can sit down, you can be drinking your coffee. And okay, I, I'm going to stop it right there because the video is already long enough. And I, I know y'all don't like long videos, but I will link it down below. Uh, but he does talk about AAA and gaming in it. So if you want to check it out, I would recommend you check it out. Because even if vv and facebook does not connect on this it really doesn't matter because what it's doing is pushing for the metaverse it's pushing for nfts it's pushing for the vv verse i mean it could, it's gonna blow up the whole metaverse in general is gonna blow up uh the question is is it gonna be one platform for all the metaverses or to be several platforms for the metaverse i don't know i really don't know i don't know how to I don't know if it'd be good or bad to have one, but you know, for the next five to 10 years, could we see a $50 Omi? Yeah, I think so. I really do because it, everything is shifting in that direction, 
just like it did with the internet. Uh, it's going to happen. I know it is. But yeah, so I appreciate all y'all watching. You know, uh, like, if you're new, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get all this this uh, content that I put out. I hope it's good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is Poor Man Printing. Peace out.